To date, your tips have led to the capture of 240 fugitives. Tonight, on America's Most Wanted. It was a neighborhood place where old friends shared dreams. Dreams of becoming cops. Listen, any news on the exam? One night, they got some on-the-job training. Keep your eyes to yourself on that. A chance encounter. Then, murder after just one look. Then, this country's changing. Right is wrong. Wrong is right. They wanted to start a revolution, but all they started was chaos. Now, Operation Jackal is out of control. Start the engines right away. We're going to kill them. It's a damn good show. I mean, it caught me. I feel for me if they did it. And he'll never do it again. Good evening from Washington. I'm John Walsh, and this is America's Most Wanted. October 25th, 1972. I can't feel my hands. Hey, Bryce, I snuffed that pig for you. I put him straight down, man. Did you see him fall? What do we do now? Still going to Alaska, right? We'll never be able to cross it in Canada. What about the cause? Shove the cause. So look out for our own asses now. My hands! They're burning up! Turn on the radio. Let's see if there's any news. At T.C. Williams High School in Alexandria, Virginia, William Graham and Bryce Tuller shared yes. radical anti-establishment politics. The bell rings and they run from one worthless class to the next. Mindless, voiceless roads. Never stopping to think about anything important like what's going on in this country. High school was a rat race, I'm glad I quit. Scholastic embroglio. A mind conforming punch press. Mass producing mental null sets. Pre programmed to adhere to the precepts of the pernicious system. Yeah. Someone's coming. Be cool. Check this out. Just ignore him. Well, look, it isn't the latest dropouts. Is that marijuana I smell? Cannabis sativa? Hey, Graham, why do you think they call it dope? Maybe we should put them under citizen's arrest. <laughs> hey, haven't you ever heard of better living through chemistry? Oh, you hippies make me want to puke. Why don't you try selling your patriotism to the Marines? They're looking for a few good men. They'd probably like a butch guy like you. You think you're pretty smart, don't you? Don't you? Good loss, Jocko. Hey, I didn't pick on your pothead brother, man. It was the weasel that got me mad. If William Graham and Bryce Tuller were the brains, then Bryce's brother Jonathan was the brawn. Looking good, Callan. You got a lot to learn about real fights, Will.
how the United States has exercised a degree of restraint unprecedented in the annals of war. However, most evenings you could find William Graham at Bryce and Jonathan's house, passing time with their father, Charles Tuller, an unlikely civil servant. Oh. What do you think of Tricky Dick, huh? The more we protest, these circumstances, the more the idiot bombs. Some great democracy we live in, huh? You know who's gonna win this war? Dow Chemical. ITT, DuPont, this country's changing. Right is wrong, wrong is right. Yeah, seems to me something pretty radical needs to be done, Mr. Teller. Call me Charlie. Listen. The guys and I are heading off into the woods this weekend. Camp out, do some target practice. You want to come along? Yeah. William Graham needed a person like Charles Tolan and the two boards. His life at that particular time because of the problems that he was having with his own family. And Mr. Tuller actually became like a father figure to William. But this father figure was a suburban radical with revolution in mind. One of Charles Tuller's passions was something he called Operation Jackal. Pick up the paper. Everyone talks about change, but we'll be imposing it. We need an extra pair of eyes, Will. Eyes that see things the way we do. This is our time, right now. I've sold nearly everything to finance our mission. But we need more. More money than the four of us will ever have. If we kick some butt, we head up north, Alaska. The last frontier in a new beginning. Protest politics are dead. The battleground is now. We will map out the route that others will follow. We've been planning Operation Jackal for months. The design is pristine. We'd be a troop. We'd all have the power to command if I should fail. But once you're in it, Will, there's no turning back. It's all or nothing. You'll have to do whatever it takes. Here's phase one of the operation. Jonathan is going to go to work for the electrical company to get the technical knowledge we need. I'll sell the house to get the cash we'll need to drive through Canada and into Alaska. Bryce, Graham, you're gonna join the army to get into shape and learn about weaponry. reason to use it until now. Boys, we're about to change destiny. After months of planning, the team was ready. Two weapons experts, an electrical specialist, and a fanatical leader. Operation Jackal was well underway, but their revolutionary zeal didn't make for an infallible plan. The story continues in a moment. Sir, please, please stop. Go change of plans. Put your hands on your head! Put your hands up! The 
the target of Operation Jackal, the Arlington Trust Company, just outside Washington, D.C. in Crystal City, Virginia. Wednesday, October 25th, 1972, was a military payday, and the bank prepared for the typical rush. time again. For bank manager Harry Candy and teller Gladys Willier, it was business as usual. Just outside, the first step of Operation Jackal was underway. Price and Jonathan were 10 feet underground cutting off phone and electrical service to most of the neighborhood. at substation four? No, uh, we're at six, but uh, some reason we got the call. And you know how screwed up management is. Okay, have a good one. Break time anyway. I wonder why only some of these lights went out. What a day. You know, the other guys always went to the basement. Now, I'm sure the problem's in the back room. I went to take my lunch at the back room out the back, and that is when they came to the door, but the two guys stand up right to the door. Mr. Candy walked inside in the room. I can leave if you want me to. No, it's all right, Gladys. You can stay. We're going to need you to lock the doors. We have to control the foot traffic in and out while we repair the line. I can't possibly do that. I can't inconvenience my customers like that. Look, we need it done. Now, what about one door? Just to reduce the traffic a little. You guys say you're from the phone company? Yeah, that's right. Sit down on the floor, face down. Lady, lie down right now, or I'm gonna blow your head off. Come on! 
Oh. Arlington County police officer Israel Peter Gonzalez was making his rounds. We can do it ourselves, Mr. Candy. I assume that they want to kill us, because the way they keep hurting us no. with a gun or whatever they have in hand. OK, I got the keys. Take care of her. Do it. Take this to the bank. The best thing to do is play dead. Finally, I decided I better get out from here and run. I saw the legs of somebody in the floor, and the, I thought it was a customer, but the shock of my life was when I passed the door, I saw Peter Gonzalez. He was the one. And since I knew him, I completely forgot about the situation and just went on the floor and I was trying to pull him out of the way in case they come back. When I arrived on the scene, it was just pure chaos. There was a large amount of blood inside the, uh, the area where the bodies were. Um, there was blood leading away from the bank. First, you, you know, you get that sick feeling. You know that one of your own has gone down. The FBI had initiated a, an immediate uh, nationwide search for the tellers. With Operation Jackal in complete chaos, the four revolutionaries fled south through North Carolina and Georgia. Fugitives arrived in Houston in search of a doctor who they could trust to help Bryce, but bad luck prevailed. He doesn't practice here anymore. What about another doctor? Maybe we should split up. You said we could take over if things got bad. Forget it, Graham. Now, what did I tell you when we started? We're all in this together. You told me a lot of things, Mr. Tuller. Now we're murderers. You listen to me. We're not murderers. Not murderers. Revolutionaries don't commit murder. Revolutionaries don't commit murder. Revolutionaries do not commit murder. He's losing it. He is not. What are we going to do? Thank you. 
Eastern Airlines Flight 496 was departing for Syracuse by way of Atlanta. Ticket agent Stanley Hubbard was working the midnight shift alone. Sir, 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 you can't go in there without a ticket, sir. Please stop. I'm going to have to call security. Sir, please stop. Sir, please, please stop. Please, sir. Sir. engine had started up before my friend was uh, through fueling. He said, hey, man, you, I can't fuel this airplane while the engine's running. You know, it's against regulations. He said, why don't you run up the jetway and tell the captain to shut the engines off so we can finish the fueling. I said, OK. Noticed my friend was laying right in front of the jetway, right in front of the door in a pool of blood. Of course, I didn't realize what was going on. I was probably putting me in shock. met with him, I heard something go off, and I felt something hit me in the arm, and I decided I knew what was happening then. And needless to say, I turned around and started running. He fired again, got me in the arm again, and I hit the jet up against the wall, and just kept running, blood going everywhere, and just kept running, trying to get away from him, hoping he wouldn't come out in the jetway and finish me off. Passengers on Eastern Flight 496 were subjected to revolutionary slogans, violent threats, and invitations to join their hijackers in Cuba. All declined. The plane returned safely to the U.S., minus only the four revolutionaries. Operation Jackal was a failure. Their revolution was over, but in its wake, tragedy. Bank manager Harry J. Candy, dead at 33. Sir. Eastern Airlines ticket agent Stanley Hubbard, dead at 34. An Arlington County police officer Israel Peter Gonzalez, dead at 27. Honored by one of the largest processions ever assembled for a slain officer. I got me now. Bank teller Gladys Willier escaped with her life, but it was two years before she was able to return to work full time. And to this day, ground crewman Wyatt Wilkinson has never been able to enter a jetway. The four revolutionaries spent their first months in Cuba in a detention camp. But life in Havana wasn't what the Tullers expected. After three years of impoverished living, the Castro government allowed them to return to the U.S. under assumed names. Within two weeks, Bryce Tuller was arrested trying to rob a Fayetteville, North Carolina Kmart. Charles and Jonathan Tuller panicked and surrendered to the FBI. All three Tullers pleaded guilty. In 1988, Charles Tuller suffered a fatal heart attack in prison. Jonathan Tuller is now a nationally ranked power lifter, serving time at Powhatan Correctional Center in Virginia. In 1984, Bryce Tuller escaped from prison, but turned himself in days later saying he was cold and hungry. He's now in maximum security. As for William White Graham, he stayed on in Cuba. 
1975, the Washington Post interviewed Graham by telephone from Havana. Graham claimed revolutionaries aren't murderers. He'd have a hard time explaining that to the families of the victims of Operation Jackal. Innocent people whose lives were cut short simply because they were in the way of a doomed plot. After 20 years as a fugitive abroad, the FBI believes Graham is back in the U.S. Here's a high school yearbook photo of Graham. He's always worn glasses, though he took them off for this Army portrait. In the Army, he picked up some mechanics and a knowledge of weapons. Here's Graham as he entered boot camp in the summer of 1972. Our forensic artist has calculated how Graham may look today at age 38. He likes the outdoors and he has a ruddy complexion. Always a baseball fan, Graham's athletic and probably still has a trim build. In Cuba, Graham did a lot of swimming and he may have taken up scuba diving. Agents believe Graham is now on the West Coast, maybe working in the computer field. If you recognize William White Graham, there's an FBI agent waiting to hear from you. Call our hotline right now at 1-800-CRIME-93. That's 1-800-274-6393.